going to be talking about optimizing and troubleshooting PostgreSQL instances with Percona monitoring and management. We are Sergey Kuzmichov and speaking now, Austin Gallego. Uh, we work at Percona uh, in the support team as support engineers. And we use this tool extensively both with uh, our customer environments and our environments uh, of our own when we need to test or, or work on uh, our in, uh, internal projects, right? So we are going to go briefly through the agenda and it's going to be composed of what is PMM first and foremost, then why would we need a monitoring tool in our environments? Why, uh, wh what are the cool things uh, that these tools can provide us? Then we are going to see PMM in action. So via a live demo, we're going to show you how to move around PMM, how to use the different dashboards and information that you have. And then the last uh, two minutes, uh, sorry, five minutes, we are going to have a space for Q&A section. So what is PMM? PMM, as it, names, as it name implies, is a monitoring and management tool. So right now, I, I think it's like 90% monitoring and 10% management. Uh, but these, we are continue, continuously working on improving the tool and making it more and more uh, functionality uh, feature, let's say feature complete. Uh, so we actually built it on top on many uh, open source software tools like Grafana um, for viewing the, the information we have, the metrics and the queries for viewing it in the different dashboards. Um, Victoria Metrics and previously Prometheus for exporting metrics and storing them. Uh, Clickhouse for storing query analytics information, which Sergey is going to talk uh, briefly um, shortly. And uh, we even use PostgreSQL, which is actually really cool uh, in terms of this talk, right? Because we can even monitor our internal PostgreSQL instance, which we use for storing configuration and internal data for PMM. And Docker and many other, uh, like Nginx and console, many other more tools, right? Regarding Docker, we provide that deployment method, but we also provide the, uh, a virtual machine and an uh, AWS image, so an AMI, that you can just with a few clicks have your PMM server working in your AWS infrastructure, which is also really, really cool. So what is PMM? PMM um, monitors many different databases and extracts metrics and queries from them so we can make take informed decisions about our environment. So the, the important thing to mention here is that it not only supports PostgreSQL, which is why you, what you're here for, but if you have any MySQL or MySQL forks like Percona Server or MariaDB or MongoDB, or again, Percona Server from MongoDB, you have this support, let's say, for free, right? So it's a really nice um, feature that it can provide support for the, all these many different flavors of uh, DBs. So very brief, briefly also, what is uh, PMM's architecture? It, it follows a client server architecture. So in, uh, in the client, this would be the, the component that we would install in the server where we are running the database, typically, because we, we can also have uh, serve, let's say serverless uh, or, or external exporters um, configured. And then this uh, client would send metrics and queries all the way to uh, PMM server, which again uh, is composed of Nginx, Postgres, ClickHouse, Victor Metrics, and all the uh, other components we discussed before. Um, so why is monitoring needed? There, your own use cases may warrant uh, different um, different use cases from the the monitoring. But th I think these these points are are fair enough to say that they can be uh, 
seen as global benefits that monitoring can give us, right? For instance, optimally using our infrastructure, which can lower our overall costs, um, minimizing response times to the application sites, which is again, what a database should do. It should uh, um, service the application as fast as it can, um, the faster, the better, and the, the, the the less the response times that we have from the database, the better. Um, another very important point is to have live data uh, to troubleshoot issues when they are happening, at the moment they are happening. This can prevent us from having outages or can minimize the downtime we have if we can assess the situation fast and uh, correctly. And then another point is to have, to simply have uh, historic information to analyze trends or work on root cause analysis. So after this brief introduction, I'm going to give way to Sergey. So without further ado, he is going to start the live demonstration on PMM. Thank you, Augustin. Let me share my screen and I hope it worked from the first time. All righty then. Uh, so what we have here on my screen is the query analytics interface. And the query analytics is a part of PMM and it's an interesting feature differentiating it. And what it shows here is a bird's eye overview of all of our servers that we set up for this demo and all the queries that have been running in the past three hours. And uh, we can see here, for instance, that the, this particular query has the highest relative load. And the load here is kind of like the load average on the Linux. Uh, shows us basically how frequently this query is being sampled. Not that it takes most time, not that maybe either it takes a long time and so it's faced frequently, or maybe it's just run so many times that even if it runs really quick, we still see it here. We also can see the breakdown for the database and the breakdown for node name. Unless your load is spread uniformly across multiple nodes, you might not want to see the complete overview. You might want to zoom into the particular database. The interesting thing here also is like, you can see the spark line change of the load happening. So for instance, if you are looking at a query and it was pretty table and then spike, that means that probably something has happened. And it might be interesting to take a look at this particular query and zoom into this time on either in query analytics or in the other dashboards that I will also show you. So what we can do, for instance, is we can see that one of the nodes is having most load from all of them, from all the other nodes. And if we go here, we can see that some time ago, and we can see when, so almost an hour ago, something happened and a heavy read load is now hitting this particular node, which is, might be expected, might be not, but still worth exploring. So what we can do is we can drill down into this query. We can see the table definition and we can see some table details, some, some query details, whatever we were doing uh, we were reading blocks sometime and really doing something else all of the time. Unfortunately, the coverage is not perfect. Uh, we can see that there were most of the shared blocks were hits, uh, not misses, which is good, obviously, and that we spent probably most time on reading blocks. Right, but still doesn't tell us whatever happened, but we could probably guess looking at the query and the table definition that probably an, an index is missing here, uh, but still we would need to look at other dashboards or like explain this query and take a look at what is going on. We can also go back up to our bird's eye overview and zoom into this insert. Again, we can see indexes, we can see table definition. In this case, we can also see an example. And one thing I haven't mentioned is how the QM gets this data. Uh, we built QM to work with to 
extensions of PostgreSQL, the pgstat statements and the pgstat monitor that Percona provides. And if you are using pgstat statements, then it normalizes the query and you cannot see the specific examples. If you are using pgstat monitor and you configure it specifically, then you can see the example of the query. Like this insert shows me what data was being inserted. And pgstat monitor also extends the capabilities of the pgstat statements and it gives us also like user CPU time and system CPU time. In this particular example, the amount of CPU time is minuscule, but it could be an issue for some different query. So we have here a host, if I will remember which one of them, that has this pgstat statement, pgstat monitor setup. Uh, yeah, you know, that kind of how it happens. You cannot have everything perfect. Right, so this 167 node has pgstat uh, monitor setup. And so what we can do here is we can also add a column. So for CPU, and we can actually go ahead and sort not only by query time, not only by query count, not by load, but by the user CPU time and see, for instance, which query takes most CPU time. Right. So some of the queries, unfortunately, have been kind of cut off here. Uh, this doesn't happen with the PG start statements, so, but you also don't get the CPU time breakdown. Okay, so this is QM. Let's move to other dashboards and we will start a bit uh, unexpectedly with a custom dashboard. So PMM is based on the open source technologies like exporters and Grafana and Prometheus or Victorian metrics, and it's extensible. So we took a pretty old dashboard made for PMM1 and ported it to PMM2 and extended kind of the Q1 idea, but showing some data that might not be easily visible there, uh, like block read time, block write time, although it is actually available in QM. Uh, we're also going to add the wall read and write information here, wall write information here. And you can see kind of a per surveys breakdown what is going on. And for instance, if we, if we go to 167, uh, yeah, we'll just see nothing, unfortunately. Right. So this is the custom dashboard and Augustine will later, later show some more of those dashboards. But the built-in dashboards are the instances overview and the instance summary. So let's start with the instances overview. The instances overview is by default like QM, it's like a bird's eye view of all of your infrastructure, of all of your servers here. And again, it kind of expects your servers to have uniform load because if your servers have really different load patterns, you are probably better off looking at into each individual server. But we will start here because we know that our servers have uniform load. And so we can easily see uh, using this dashboard, the outliers. For instance, we saw one of our nodes had, was hit with a heavy read load. And if we go here, we see that you know, a lot of tuples uh, fetched, and a lot of tuples returned. So this is kind of our indication uh, from this side of the PMM that there is something different in this node. And we could go from here to QM or go from QM to here. We can also see connection details, like how many connections are there. And again, this node has most. We can go to auto vacuum details and see that there is unfortunately a node where we forgot to enable auto vacuum, which is quite funnily quite a common issue. And you probably don't want to do that. So it gives you quite a lot of information. Maybe we were able to see some temp files created, right? And yeah, quite a lot of temp files there. And this is a bird's eye overview. When we are investigating some particular instance like this 227 that had heavy read load, 
we want to go into PostgreSQL instance summary. The navigation here is done with this drop down menu, by the way. So, what we can see here is kind of the specific and deeper information on the PostgreSQL instance. Like, we can see how many tuples were returned, and we can see that it's like skyrocketing from pretty much zero to 150,000 to millions of rows, uh, which gives us an indication there was something wrong there. And in the meantime, the number of transactions is really dropping, but the number of time spent on transactions is actually increasing. Um, you can see that idle transaction time is pretty low, so we are fine on that regard, but still it's kind of growing here. So we can see the number of locks, we can see the block operations, we can see the pretty regular information about what PostgreSQL can give us. This all is based on the exporter information, but if you want to see something special, you can add custom queries to your exporter to uh, and uh, do a dashboard basically, or use one of our extended dashboards. We can compare the server with another one and see that there is quite a bit of difference in their lot pattern inserts compared to fetches and the duration of transactions is pretty different there. I think we have a server where we specifically left an idle transaction session there, right? Yeah. So we can see here that there was a long transaction there, which is known to cause quite a lot of issues. So PMM, as Augustin mentioned, monitors PostgreSQL, MySQL, MongoDB, but it can also be used to monitor servers. So Augustin, hand over, handing over to you, can you show us the operating system monitoring? Thank you. Let me go back to sharing my screen. Um, actually, do you see the slides or uh, PMM? I actually see nothing. Um, okay, yeah, I see PMM. PMM, okay, perfect. So this is um, the home dashboard. This is what you will get um, when you just go to the, uh, to the PMM URL to the URL you, you have it running in or the IP address or uh, whichever you use. And if you scroll down, you will get um, all the, the nodes you are monitoring and some initial data on, um, let's say, the four, the, the four uh, most important metrics of, uh, you would have on, on a server that's basically a CPU disk um, a, a network. Um, and memory, and then some information on uh, the DB side, right? Like queries, queries per second and connections. If um, you click, you can click on um, this uh, small triangle here and go to the node summary for each node, which I already have um, the nodes overview preloaded. This is like um, the, the view that uh, Sergey showed with PostgreSQL when we have a bird's eye view of our, um, all of our servers um, in, in, in our deployment. Uh, so we can have information on the, the whole fleet of servers, right? In this case, um, we can see that there is a load that is ha having a very hard time um, with its CPU um, resources. Right, as clearly, and then others that um, even if they are not uh, close to saturation or fully fully used, they are um, on, on their way. Right, so um, we have a lot a lot of information in these dashboards, as you can uh, already see, and actually making sense of them is what we try to um, to give the most benefits. Uh, from right, so these dashboards are um, actually done by us, and they um, they take a lot of time and, and thought uh, behind on how to present the data, right? Because these metrics are uh, could be uh, all over the place, and we are actually having many many iterations already of uh, PMM, 
and continually improving these da dashboards, right? So um, we can go from this bird's eye view, as we were saying uh, before, um, to a more locally focused view in which we can get resources per node, um, uh, OS related resources per node, right? We have, um, if you are familiar with the PT summary tool, we have a PT summary output here that it can give us very valuable information. For instance, at a glance, I can see that we could certainly do better in this node just by avoiding uh, the swappiness to be so high. So the first thing I would do here is just set swappiness uh, straight to one, right? And there is um, heaps of information here that uh, you, can, you can even see the, the, the schedulers, um, the, the network connections you have, even if you are using transparent huge pages uh, that you typically don't want to have them enabled. So as you can see, in a, in, we have a lot of information in a very small um, space there, right? And then if we go, we can confirm that CPU usage is over the roof at 80% user um, percent uh, user length, let's say, right? Um, we can see that there is at least one CPU core being almost fully utilized. And then that the normalized CPU load, which is this in, in light blue, um, the normalized CPU load is also like, if it's greater than one, it means that there is already some queuing uh, going on and there are processes that are having, um, they're, they're going to have to wait for the turn, right? Um, and then again, we have, um, information on all the important uh, subsections of a server, right? CPU, memory, network, and disk, as we said before. If we want even more information, let's say for, for disk, you have um, like global IOPS uh, load latency. But if we, if we want even more information, we have even uh, more uh, detailed dashboards on each of these, like disk, memory, network, and CPU. Right, so let me open this in parallel and I'm going to go to the, um, the memory details that I had already um, loaded. And since we have only a very short amount of time left, I'm just going to say that um, you, you, you have a lot of information here uh, regarding um, memory usage, which types of memory uh, are being used, uh, the page cache, how, how much is, is being used, so a lot of valuable information that you have at, at just a one click distance, right? And then um, the same with the disks. We can see that uh, we don't know what spiked this, but there is really heavy uh, recent usage of the disks, right? Maybe um, regarding what Sergey mentioned, the unindexed uh, queries that were appearing just now, um, uh, we, we can, of course, zoom into this and then go to straight to a Postgres uh, dashboard and see more information about it. And then the last thing I want to mention real, real quick is um, that we do have, uh, let me go to the Postgres uh, dashboards. Um, we do have some uh, custom dashboards that we are going to share with you over Sergey's uh, GitHub page that is going to be in the, in the slides. Um, that really have a lot of in-depth information on um, tuples, uh, auto vacuum, auto analyze, all uh, like space used by uh, the different tables, the different databases. So very valuable information if you want to um, to be able to know which uh, servers are consuming more resources or which servers need um, particular tunings like we also see in, in many of our customers' environments per table auto vacuum setups um, that may disrupt what um, a normal uh, or a regular um, auto vacuum operation would be. Um, you have last auto vacuum information here. And as you can see, these tables are being uh, vacuumed a lot of times, right? The last time was 50 seconds. And if we refresh, we would see, see, see them appearing all the time, right? So maybe these tables are either heavily loaded 
or they have vertebral or vacuum settings. Um, and then, yeah, as I mentioned, you have information on tuples, uh, operations, um, reads, writes, etc. So there is really a lot, a lot of information that you can uh, get from this. If you just and installing these would be just taking the JSON that you will find in the GitHub page, just copy in, copying them into an imported dashboard here. Um, so I think we are a bit over and we don't want to be um, leaving no space for questions. So we are going to um, stop over here. Um, Sergey, if you have any parting words and yeah, we can open the, open the room for questions. Yeah, I am open for questions and as usual, you may just contact us and uh, we will help you. And uh, honorary, mentor, on, honorary mention, we do have PMM demo site that we maintain, but you can go ahead and just experiment with. Okay, that's it from my side. Okay, um, thank you guys. These uh, slides are going to be uploaded. So now let's go back to Q&A section. So thank you very much. Uh -huh.